Hello, and welcome to today's ACM SIGSOF webinar. This webcast is part of ACM SIGSOF's commitment to provide value to its current and future members. The ACM SIGSOF webinar series features speakers from the Future of Software Engineering track at the International Conference on Software Engineering, as well as select keynote speakers and distinguished paper authors. I am Lori Dillon, a professor of computer science at Michigan State University and the vice chair of ACM SIGSOFT, the special interest group on software engineering. I am also general chair of ICSI 2016, the SIGSOFT co-sponsored international conference on software engineering that will be held next May in Austin, Texas. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to quickly mention a few housekeeping items shown on the slide in front of you. The slides will advance automatically throughout the event. On the bottom panel, you'll find a number of widgets and resources. If you are experiencing problems with the slides or audio, press the F5 key on, in Windows or the Command and R keys on Mac, or refresh your browser on a mobile device, or simply close and relaunch the presentation. To control the volume, adjust the master volume on your computer. At the end of our presentation, we will have time for questions. Please type your question into the Q&A box at any time and click on the Submit button. This session is being recorded and will be archived. You will receive an automatic email notification when it is available, or you can check www.sigsoft.org slash webinars.html in a few days for updates. A copy of today's slide deck is available in the resource list widget that looks like a green folder at the bottom of your screen. So today's webinar is a departure from the usual technical presentation on the future of software engineering. It is more a look at the future of ACM SIGSOFT. Will Trace, the ACM SIGSOFT chair, will be holding a virtual town hall meeting summarizing current SIGSOFT activities and offering listeners an opportunity to both ask questions and volunteer ideas for how SIGSOFT might better serve their needs. Dr. Trace has been chair of ACM SIGSOFT for the last three years, after he retired from Lockheed Martin, where he was an enterprise architect and a Lockheed Martin Fellow. Will, we look forward to your presentation. Thank you very much, Laurie, and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, sorry that uh, I can't buy you all a drink or provide you with some finger food as if we had a uh, town hall meeting at ICSI earlier this month, as well as, uh, but if you're going to ISTA, fortunately there will be food and beverage for the town hall meeting where I will also have the opportunity to uh, interact with those members and the attendees. As Lori said, I have been chair for the last three years. The, my term ends at the end of the month. And uh, all I can say is that it's been fun and that uh, I've enjoyed the opportunity to meet people, and I'm enjoying the opportunity today to uh, meet you all and maybe convince you to be a volunteer or, or fund some of the ideas that you might have so that SIGSOFT can make your job easier. With that said, what am I going to talk about? Well, I've got lots of slides here, and you can download them, of course. And basically, if you don't know who we are, well, who we were, I should say, because we had an election. And unfortunately, tomorrow they are announcing the results, so I cannot uh, spoil that for everyone. Uh, but you'll at least know, and hopefully you voted. Uh, what we've done, what we have uh, not done, it's been some very interesting ideas put forth. And some of them we've acted on. Some of them we've, uh, we've waited, or we're actually going to wait for the next uh, executive committee members to decide on what to do and how to bring that about. And of course, uh, I'm most interested in knowing what you would like us to do or, or, or not do, uh, if it is uh, something that we've done that we can improve on, whatever. So the new stuff is if you are a retired member or approaching retirement, we've, we've actually provided some additional uh, 
way for you to afford to be continue your membership. And I've got great news on open source conference proceedings. That if, if from academia, there always seems to be a push on on what is fair and how to how to make access uh, without a, a digital library license to resources that are archived uh, by ACM. Uh, we're proposing a new award, which I'll talk about. And then, if you have aspirations to become a PC member, uh, one of the hot topics of discussion was: Is there any way to avoid? Uh, or reduce registration fees at conferences by perhaps eliminating a PC meeting and going virtual. With that said, um, let's just move on to what who we are. So as Lori said, I'm the chair, uh, the past chair, David Rosenblum, uh, and Lori is the vice chair. As you can see, we are organized uh, by members at large who are voting members and who six soft members actually voted for. And um, you can see the names of uh, Gail Francis, Frank, and Willem and what their capacities were in our organization. Uh, then we have volunteers or appointed positions. And Wei Li uh, caps is probably, if you're a student, a wonderful opportunity to get free money to come to conferences. Uh, we coordinate with activities in uh, Hong Kong, China, and recently in India. That's our uh, Indian software uh, liaison, Pankaj Olete, and uh, focusing most importantly on the newsletter, where uh, Mike Wing has been serving for the last three years. Uh, unfortunately, he's resigning in uh, end of the month. And so we will be looking for volunteers to help in the newsletter production. AJ Jane from Adobe is uh, right now doing a great job composing the, each issue. And, uh, and hopefully you're reading some of the uh, material. Who will be chair? Who has been in the election uh, process? Uh, you can see the names. Frank, who was a member at large, and Nino from uh, USC. And then our vice chair from University of Illinois and DePaul, and then various members at large here, both in uh, only two from the United or three from the United States, and then uh, the rest. We have a very diverse uh, offering of volunteers to serve as members at large. Six off member memberships, yeah, yeah, benefits. So if you remember, you're already receiving software engineering notes, and you probably realize that those, if you signed up for the table of contents, which I thoroughly recommend that you do, uh, when they get the push to you, you will be able to uh, go to the digital library and read an electronic uh, version, but there are other things in the digital library in particular that you have access to because all of SIGSAW sponsored or co-sponsored conferences are available to SIGSAW members and I, uh, in, uh, without having a, um, a university or private digital library license. Of course, you get digital uh, discounted registrations at conferences, and, and then we have the usual notifications that you can opt out of, of uh, the six off chair can send out notices to you, which is hopefully the way that you found out about this webinar. And there's lots of good things on the website. And we're looking to reboot the website. If anybody wants to volunteer to help us redesign the website, uh, please contact me uh, after this uh, webinar. This is the home page if you had gone to sigsoft.org. Uh, and probably what I want to point out, because I'll be diving down more, is that we do have the webinars uh, news, a uh, new webinars web page. Uh, we do have uh, uh, this open table of contents, which I'll talk about in a second here. But you'll see a list of all the conferences, upcoming conferences, and it's a good way to stay on top of things where we're we will be going as far as uh, of resources that are available to you as a SIGSOFT member. This is uh, speaking of resources. Um, 
This is the latest issue of the Software Engineering Notes. Actually, it's last month's issue. And so you can see that there, the material that appeared in the last issue of uh, Software Engineering Notes. As well as the books that were available for review, uh, once again, the price is right. You just sort of send a note saying, uh, look at the list, and this is the book I want. And a couple of weeks later, it shows up, and you can fill out a uh, short uh, review. Uh, there's a template that's online that you uh, makes it easy if you've not done something like this before. And once again, it's meant to be a way of uh, sharing your opinions and not necessarily a lot of work. Uh, you don't need to read the book. You just need to give your opinion on what you've uh, uh, you know what you read. Uh, don't have to read the whole thing. Okay. What have we done with re regard to new member benefits? Well. We've reduced the memberships. Well, we sort of increased them too, but you know, we had to come to grips with the fact that printing costs and mailing costs have been escalating, and so, uh, and not everybody reads them. So, uh, the print material. So, since everything is available online, we've reduced membership, and so it's really very affordable. If you're a student, ten dollars. Uh, if you're a uh, retired individual, ten dollars. That's uh, well worth uh, the price of admission, so to speak, especially. If you're a student and you want to apply for a CAPS of $1,000 or so, uh, CAPS of travel grant, uh, yeah, it's well worth the investment. Uh, this open table of contents website, which I'll talk about uh, a bit, and once again expanding reach to uh, India, the uh, SIGSOFT branch in India. They now have access to software engineering notes. And uh, you're talking to the webinar series, so uh, thank you for attending. Um, here's the open source table of contents. There are about 70 conference proceedings that you see here that uh, are available. They're not SIGSOFT conferences. They're just conferences of various SIGs that SIGSOFT we have made available for access to SIGSOFT members. You can just go in and through what is known as the authorizer link, uh, gain access to the table of contents as well as any of the materials. So being a member of SIGSOFT doesn't necess necessarily mean you can only see SIGSOFT proceedings. You'll be able to see all the proceedings that we've made available here. Uh, off at this web page, and once again, the link is available on our home page. Uh, and here are the list of webinars that uh, we've had a webinar last uh, week, and it was uh, canned, as they say, as this one will be, and it's available for replay if you're interested in learning more about evolutionary software development, which is which was a very interesting presentation. I was happened to be the moderator. We had a lot of good questions, and um, it put a very interesting spin. It was uh, not a software. Greenfield development was focused mostly on uh, the crossing the line between early development and then maintenance and uh, and what skills or what approaches and uh, what tools you can use to effectively maintain software changes. Okay, uh, and then we've got one coming up, as you can see down at the bottom, Margaret Burnett will be speaking uh, next week on uh, in user software engineering beyond the silos. That's one of the future software engineering talks. And then at the end of the month, there will be a, actually an ACM professional development talk that was a keynote speaker at ICSI last year uh, in Hyderabad. Okay, community benefits. Uh, I really don't need to. You can scan this and see that it all makes sense. It's the usual thing. I would just emphasize that well, we're always looking for volunteers. There's always good ideas and good work that needs to be done. Um, and that if you're a student, you should really be aware of the CAPS program and CAPS grants in order to help you uh, otherwise uh, defray the cost of attending and participating in SIGSOFT events. So in summary, what we did was we reduced the registration fee. We're planning for. Uh, 
Bergamo, Italy, uh, ESSECT FSC uh, in September. Uh, we're well on our way for Seattle, Washington in 2016. And we gave out a lot of awards, 77 awards, over $75,000 in travel grants for attending various conferences, which I'll show you. Now, this chart here, uh, I have it as a placeholder to show you and acknowledge the fact that we've had individuals who are recognized at various member grades. And you, some of you may be aware of it, some of you may not be aware of it, that uh, it's fairly straightforward to have the right be recognized as a senior member and uh, the distinguished scientist education engineer requires a little more work, but uh, once again, uh, I, we are here to support you if you have any questions on how you become a senior member level uh, or achieve the distinction of being a distinguished scientist or educator. Please contact us. The information is actually on the web page on how, to, what, how many layers of recommendation or what background material you need to provide. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And once again, be happy to see your name up there uh, next time at the next town hall meeting. Uh, this year, we were fortunate enough to recognize Michael Ernst as a PCM Sigsaw Fellow. This is a very uh, detailed application process. It requires, uh, once again, the community has several individuals who are worthy, uh, but it takes a lot of effort and um, and we're glad to see that uh, Michael was recognized this time. If you have any questions, please, please contact us. Uh, the, uh, another big three award that we have each year is called the Impact Paper Award, and this one recognized uh, James Jones, Mary Jean Harold, and John Statsko. It is an award given out to individuals who basically stood the test of time. And so over 10 years of ago, they did something that now is has stood the test of time and has definitely, by the number of citations other researchers have or the amount of uh, productization, even the fact that they've, they have been seminal and this paper is seminal in, in providing uh, uh, advances in the state of the art and state of the practice. So uh, that's what the Impact Award is. Then the next award is Influential Educator, Barbara Ryder uh, at Virginia Tech, and our uh, outstanding researcher, uh, Carlo Getze. Uh, and finally, our Distinguished Service Award, uh, Bashar Newsbeth uh, from the Open University and the Irish Software Research Center. So those are referred to as our big three awards, and more information is found on our website, uh, sigsoft.awards. And I'll just stress that we're always looking for more uh, submissions, more candidates. So if you know anybody who is worthy of those particular categories, we've tried to make it very easy by creating a nomination web page. Just fill in the form, and uh, each year the we close down the applications at December 15th. So uh, you've got plenty of time to think about it. Once again, if you have any questions, just please contact me. Looking back, we had a very good year uh, in Hong Kong, FSE 2014. It had 462, broke all records for uh, attendees, uh, lowest registration fee, largest number of submissions. Uh, 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 and lowest registration cost, well, that, that's for overall conference as well as workshops. I, I should say it also made the most money as any FSC. So we'll be increasing the amount of travel support uh, for uh, future uh, FSCs uh, paying it forward. Uh, this chart didn't quite come out the way I expected, but let's just say that uh, right now ESAC FSC will be held in Bergamo, Italy, uh, August 31st to September 4th. And the keynote speakers, uh, Bashar Newsbeth and Carlo Getzi, uh, who I've mentioned before, and what's here also Sorosini, who is a diagnostician of Italian art. So. Bergamo is uh, one hour from Milan by train, and uh, you can go to our website and 
CC more information and details, it looks like uh, it is, as I said, uh, a very cool place to go. And hope you, I'll see you there. The next big event in 2016 is ICSI. And Lori, as you, she mentioned uh, in the introduction, is the uh, keynote speaker uh, or, or the general chair. Lori, do you have something to say? Um, well, the uh, ICSI in 2016 will be in Austin, Texas. Uh, we will be now. If I does it advance for all of you? If I advance it on mine, um, yes. We'll be in what's referred to as the New Austin area. It's the northern arboretum area of uh, Austin, so not right downtown, but in the beautiful Texas Hill Country. We'll take over the uh, Renaissance uh, Austin Hilton Hotel. Um, there's lots of activities and, and things to do in Austin. Here's another one of these slides that didn't come out exactly the way it was supposed Oops, there it goes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, lots of history, lots of loud music, uh, nightlife. Uh, there's a lot of uh, high-tech industries in the area. Um, a pretty exciting place to, to go and to be at. Um, we have two distinguished keynote speakers lined up already, Mary Shaw and Stephen Ibaraki. Uh, and we will have a third once the Harlan Mills Award um, winner has been determined. Uh, we're looking forward to going downtown to the Bullock, Texas State History Museum for our big banquet uh, with buses that will take people to downtown so they can, you know, see all the sites. Um, what else do we have in here? I guess that was, was pretty much it uh, in terms of the slides for um, ICSI and yeah. Austin. Certainly expect to right. have a exciting technical program as well. Thank you, Lori. Yes, uh, six tracks and uh, a lot to offer. A lot of live music too. That's the one I'm looking forward to. So FSC uh, in September of uh, or November of uh, 2016 is in Seattle. If you've Never been to Seattle. It's a, it's a town. We'll be right off of downtown, right on the edge of downtown. Lots to see and do. Um, and if you uh, have the opportunity and some free time, there's even more to do to go down to Boeing Field and see the Museum of Flight. Um, Tom Zimmerman is the uh, general chair, and uh, everything is going according to plan, and I look forward to seeing you there. Now, uh, some other activities that if you are curious and you have the time, and or especially I will just encourage you if you've done a, if you have a PhD dissertation to please put it into our dissertation database. Uh, and if you're curious about the chronology of the history of ACM SIGSOFT, the website is uh, full of information of who was general chairs and co-chairs and program committee members. And it's uh, and Tao is always looking for war stories, too. So if you've got some interesting historical perspective, please contact Tao, and uh, we'll add to our, our, our historical legacy. Uh, one other activity that took place that is should be of interest to um, if you're an educator or perhaps you're interested in maintaining your own uh, skills and understanding exactly uh, easy access to technology. Uh, we, one of our members at large, Warren Visser, participated in development of the. Uh, Software Engineering Curriculum update, uh, and so that's available at securriculum.org. Uh, the Computer Science Curriculum uh, was updated uh, two years ago, and that's available at cs2013.org. Uh, uh,
You are participating in the webinar series. As Lori explained at the beginning of the month, we have a full month of presentations as well as that complement the ACM Professional Development Committee uh, webinars. Um, we haven't filled out our July schedule yet, but we've got uh, various individuals who have, are just waiting to nail down some exact times. Uh, and so what the names here are you see are the names of individuals who have agreed to give talks, uh, hopefully in the July-August time frame. And uh, we'll hope to hear, see you back here uh, for those webinars. Uh, what's new as far as software engineering notes? Uh, as some of you may be aware, we have had a moratorium on paper submissions. Uh, that has changed. Uh, we're opening it up now uh, with a new submission site. It makes it easier for us to track submissions and the review process. I would hate to say that there was a uh, we had some difficulty with plagiarism. Over half the papers were coming in. Had certain sections that were just too uh, well. That I authorized their check plagiarism checking software pointed out the fact that those phrases or word uh, sentences or paragraphs in some cases were actually not properly cited and. Um, required some updates. So uh, we are moving on and we'll be including them. You know, and some people think, well, send, yeah, it's just a newsletter. But actually, it turns out that um, it's very profitable in the sense that SIGSOFT shares with the um, revenue with the digital library revenue based on the number of downloads. And so you can see that there's almost 10,000 downloads of the software engineering note content in the last six weeks and you know, 72,000 in the last 12 months. So we've got over a 1 million, 1.5 million uh, downloads of software engineering notes. Um, yeah. That's non-trivial, so it, it serves us well from a revenue source. And if you've not read some of the columns, uh, I thoroughly you know, love to read the risks as well as uh, Mark Barnhofer's um, Surfing the Web. A um, lot of good content. We're featuring a lot more workshop reports, so it's a good way to keep your finger on the pulse of technology or just uh, have some easy reading uh, uh, with respect to um, software engineering advances or practices. Uh, I talked a little bit about the CAPS Award. Uh, we spent a lot of money sending people to ICSI this year in uh, Florence. Uh, we sent people to uh, other conferences, too. So if you're interested in attending any of those, please do. I know ISTA is not on here. ISTA coming in July, we'll send at least six people to ISTA uh, compliments uh, having their travel expenses paid for by SIGSOFT. Uh, once again, if you're a student, you're applying for this. This sounds good to you. You need to be a SIGSOFT student member. And there is a new uh, process, which is supported by a portal uh, where you fill in the blank, uh, the forms, and uh, include your letters of support. And uh, once again, for practical purposes, we need to know about six weeks before the conference that it's your intention that you would like to travel support. And, um, and we'll do the best we can to prioritize and meet everyone's re uh, requests, but there's no guarantee. So this is a quick look of all the events that we have coming up this year and next year. Uh, just say ICSI was in, as you can see, in Austin, Texas, and FSC is going to be in Seattle. Um, but you also see that ICSI 2017 is going to be in Buenos Aires. Hopefully, everything will fall into place there. It looks looking good, and we hope uh, everything works out. So what else is there? to talk about that might be of interest. And that is, we've achieved this open table of contents, but the big but is, and that's why the next step is there, is that those papers are only available for one year. Uh, and then they go behind the firewall. Well, the good news, and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to check the box, is that uh, ACM, uh, has decided that 
uh, they're going to put the as soon as they put the next mechanisms into place, all conferences, if they have been open source uh, for the year, will be open source forever. So this is the perpetual open source table of contents, and that is um, the pubs board has agreed and presented it to the city governance board and recommended that that is going to be the new uh, policy. And so all conference proceedings um, that uh, choose to be open source uh, will be open source forever. Uh, we're looking into being a professional travel scholarship, that uh, like a CAP scholarship. If you are not in academia, you're not a student, or uh, maybe you are, because there are travel actually awards that through the National Science Foundation that are available for faculty who do not have travel support to go to conferences. Um, you can find that information in particular. We're setting things up now, hopefully for uh, ICSI 2016. But you know, you might be uh, uh, working. Your company doesn't have you travel. Uh, does not provide you with coverage for uh, registration and travel to a conference. Or some uh, SIGs have this, and we're recommending the current executive committee is recommending that the subsequent uh, executive committee investigate uh, that as a possibility. We are having this new early career award, and, and hopefully we'll set up uh, a chapter of SIGSOFT in China. OK. With that said, I think we are done with all the material everything that I wanted to say once again. Uh, I wish that I could have provided you food and beverage to go along with this lunchtime for some of us talk. And uh, for others, uh, I'll make it up to you if you're at ISTA or ICSI. Please come again and uh, ask your questions there. But right now, Lori, do we have any questions? Um, we've had a very quiet audience. Uh, we have not gotten any questions. Uh, is there, no. <laughs> there have been no questions fired off in in this whole time. So, um, well, obviously, I answered everyone's questions by just crystal clear, right? Crystal clear by what I had to say. So, um, well, if there are no questions, should uh, well, Lori, do you have any, do you have any questions? I mean, do you, in retrospect. Uh, what do you you know? How, how do you think it's gone over the last three years as far as SigSoft, uh, and um, where do you think we'll be going? <laughs> well, I'm kind of curious about what the new funding model is going to be with everything going open source at this point. Um, how that's going to affect you know the, the our, our uh, a lot of the money revenue. Yeah. The revenue that we get from ACM is based on downloads. Is that what's going to continue to be the case when it's all open source? Right. So. All open and available? Then, then is one question, and speculation is that, well, you know, if time will tell. Uh, right now, we get on average $150,000 a year digital library revenue, and because not all digital library content, meaning the transactions on software engineering, for example, and other journals, are not open source, and they will continue to be paper access or digital library uh, you know, licensing access. So there will not everything that's in the digital library will be made available. And the question is, well, what about all the archival? Information meaning conferences that didn't take place, uh, that took place two or three years ago before open source was uh, as an option provided as an option, and that is another topic of discussion. I know ISIP is entered into a deal with Springer Verag that uh, they will make available open of open of access table of contents to all. Conference proceedings that Springer Verlog uh, uh, provides, and that after four years uh, it will be open source. So they basically drew a line, a line in the sand that says uh, uh, after four years any past publications will be, be open source, but they will keep uh, paper access uh, for three years. So 
Uh, how we do that uh, is uh, whether ACM will pick up on that uh, remains to be seen. Uh, let's see. So one thing uh, it might also be worth talking a little bit about is the new relationships that are being um, tried out between journals and conference publications with the new, I know ICSI this year had the first uh, journal session um, where papers that had been published at uh, uh, maybe TSE and TOSM were eligible to be presented at, uh, the, you know, if they had not been previously presented at any other conferences, uh, there was a session in which some of these papers were, were presented and discussed. Um, yes, that's, that's, yes, that's a very interesting uh, change that in for the six the software engineering community, SIGMOD and maybe SIGHPC um, have had the uh, and, and other professional societies actually it's called journal first uh, publication so that if you had a paper that was published in a journal uh, you would be you know you wanted to then present uh, make a presentation at a conference um, then the paper would be treated as uh, previously reviewed or screened and um, you would be uh, yeah, given a slot um, to uh, make the presentation and this is considered a radical departure uh, for uh, to some traditionalists, and as just as the fact that program committee meetings, if you're a faculty member going to a program committee meeting, uh, is expensive for you, uh, but it's a, gets a chance to actually sit elbow to elbow and network with uh, some of distinguished luminaries who you might have had uh, used their books in uh, teaching courses or or otherwise just start to build a uh, you know networking relationship with. And uh, I see there was a question that came in while we were chatting here <laughs> about the. Okay, I, I, about I, I the just start off that I'd ask as soon as you took a breath. <laughs> so uh, yeah. yes, we do have a question. How are the SIGSOF memberships distributed? For instance, academic versus business versus manufacturing. Dot 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 dot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I will say that the last time I looked, we had 2,114 members. And, you know, 10 years ago, we had 2,500 members. And in general, uh, everything, all the SIGs are, are having a decline. Uh, but we're, we've basically been around the 2,000 level for the last five years. And um, over half of our memberships are practitioners. They're not .edu. And so, where be it, it's probably 60-40. Um, that, that I find that uh, I, being uh, a retired Lockheed Martin fellow, was always very, and also a member of the ACM Professional Development Committee, you know, looking for ways to provide resources for uh, the yeah, uh, non-academic, uh, the non-students, although it's recognizing that uh, software engineering research is very important and that, you know, the, if you look at the makeup of mostly uh, of uh, executive committee, it's mostly academic. Uh, but nonetheless, we've, that's why this webinar series is being targeted as a way of uh, providing insight and direction uh, for uh, practitioners uh, who are, make up the majority of our, our membership. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, was there, there was another train of thought that I, go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say, if, if you have something more to say, otherwise we we can, uh, you know, close with the, the final announcements here. But did you have something else you wanted to say? Uh, no, I can't, uh, well, okay. yes, I wanted to say if you have any suggestions on webinars, uh, please let us know on topics and speakers, and 
please keep uh, you know your finger on uh, a link uh, in your web page to go check out the professional development committee i mean we had 4800 people sign up for bertrand myers uh talk on uh basically he was throwing stones well at Agile programming. And if you ever wanted to see that, it was called Agile, Good, Bad, and Ugly. And so, uh, you know, that was a lot of people, and I don't know how many of you who actually went to it, but if you went to the website, it's, it's, a, it's a very good uh, webinar, a good investment of 50 minutes of your time uh, to hear uh, the properties of Agile software that are good and the ones that are bad and the ones that are really bad. So uh, a very entertaining uh, webinar. And uh, and as I said, keep posted, keep looking for the ones that are up, up and coming. Uh, there was one very good one uh, by Eve Anderson at uh, Google who gave a, or Microsoft, who gave a talk on human uh, interface. Uh, and it was actually for mobile computing as well as for people with uh, handicap challenges. And uh, that, once again, was a very good presentation. So uh, uh, that so uh, I, one of the things that we're planning to do at, at Michigan State this uh, fall is to have a um, lunchtime viewing of webinars uh, once once every two weeks, you know, based pretty a lot of them based out on on the webinars that are available, and, and on some TED talks as well. But it's figuring that it's right. kind of a nice way to to bring together graduate students and faculty and um, uh, around some of these topics and and. Uh, and we do have another or we have another comment. No, that was just a comment. Yes, so that's good. Keep the practitioner event uh, or orientation uh, be aware. Yes. Okay, okay, let's wrap it up, Laurie. Okay. So uh, thank you, Will, for your informative presentation and insightful answers to our one question. Uh, <laughs> special thanks to uh, everybody else on the line for taking the time to attend and participate today. So a reminder that the webinar was recorded and will be available online in a few days at www.sigsoft.org slash webinars.html. You can also find announcements on upcoming SIGSOFT webinars and other ACM activities at learning.acm.org and at www.sigsoft.org. Um, I'd like to point out that the next webinar on June 18th will be back to our Future of Software Engineering series with a presentation by Professor Margaret Burnett at Oregon State University titled, End User Software Engineering Beyond the Silos. So that said, um, I will say goodbye for now. Thanks again for joining us. Hope you'll join us again in the future and hope to see you in Austin next year at ICSI. Thank you, Lori.